<laughs> Greetings, folks. This is Joseph A. Saboro, and now we're getting into the final chapter of the original Star Wars trilogy called Return of the Jedi, which is a second sequel to the first two films, the original Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, which is episode six. Now, this is also considered to be the first film to introduce us a then new sound system called THX, which is created by George Lucas and his production company, Lucasfilm Limited. It was a new wave for sound in feeders nationwide. So you get to experience it just as loud as Dolby Stereo and all the others combined. Yeah. Which it's still used today in some local feeders. Because I always remember seeing the, the trailers of the THX uh, sound system at every single feeder I go to including where I am but nowadays we don't have that kind of sound system anymore like we once did yeah because all these feeders have been closed down and converted and now we're just stuck with digital sound so that's what we get now uh, just to keep this in mind Originally, um, a lot of directors uh, was taken over to direct the sequel instead of uh, Urban Kirshner, who did the, the second movie, who did the film Empire Strikes Back. So they thought they were going to come up with some different changes in the story. In fact, originally they were going to get David Lynch as well as uh, David Cronenberg before they had a different director named Richard Mark Quinn, who actually went on to do uh, some voice acting work, uh, also for the film, but <clears throat> mostly because David Lynch was working on, on a space adventure called Dune, while David Cronenberg is just working on movies like uh, Videodrome and The Dead Zone. So, so instead, um, they got uh, Richard Mark Quinn to be signed on as a director with producer uh, Howard Kazakian, while George Lucas as well as Lawrence Kasdan wrote the screenplay with that in mind so this is becoming a whole new uh, experience because now after what happened in Empire Strikes Back we'll actually follow the reveal of Luke Skywalker's true identity so anyway Let's get to the review. It stars Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams, Anthony Daniels, David Prowse as Darth Vader, who will be the voice by James Earl Jones, Kenny Baker, Peter Mayhew, Frank Oz, along with Alex Guinness, Dennis Lawson, Kenneth Colley, Jeremy Bullock, and Warwick Davis. It's written by Lawrence Kasdan and George Lucas, who's also the producer too, along with Howard Kazakian, and it's directed by Richard Marquane. The movie begins when the Galactic Empire had reconstructed a new Death Star under the supervision of Emperor Popaltin, who's played by Ian Damid, along with Darth Vader, yeah, who's voiced by James Earl Jones. We soon find out that Luke Skywalker, who's played by Mark Hamill, had created a plan to rescue Han Solo, who's played by Harrison Ford, from the crime lord gangster Jabba the Hutt, who um, Solo had owed a debt to him. You know, ever since the beginning of the original film, which I know he was introduced, but in reality he, he was supposed to be introduced in this version. But with the help of Princess Leia, 
along with Lando Carusian, Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2, all played by Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams, Peter Mayhew, Anthony Daniels, and Kenny Baker. Leia had finally went inside Jabba's palace on Tatooine, disguised as a body hunter, with Chewbacca as her prisoner. Lando was already there, disguised as a guard, while Leia had released Han from the Carbonite prison. Yeah, which, once uh, Solo had got out, he almost looked like he came from a sauna. Yeah, and not to mention he can't see very well. That is until she was captured and enslaved by Jabba the Hutt. And now Leia is wearing a slave girl bikini. Yeah, wow, this is something you never thought you would see. But anyway, Luke had soon arrived after a tense standoff. You know, just when he was about to be in disguise. You know, just to um, have everybody um, escape. He was already being captured, and and he survives a battle with Jabba's Rancor. Yeah, that creature that that was inside the pit, which uh, Jabba the Hutt actually sent a slave girl inside the pit and was killed. Yeah, that's when you started hearing some screaming noises. Anyway, Jabba sends him and Hans to death by feeding them into the pit monster called the Salak, which they are taken to the great pit of Cancun, so lack nesting ground where Luke frees himself with R2-D2's help and that's where he uses get this the green lightsaber so that way he can stop these guys so what what happened was you know, he destroys Jabba's sail barge as the group escapes while he was battling all the guards and during the chaos Boba Fett the notorious uh, Bonnie Hunter actually had attempted to capture Luke until Haunt accidentally uh, knocks him into the Salak pit. You know, once he hits the, uh, just when he was about to save, uh, you know, everybody, he accidentally uh, hits the the jetpack of Boba Fett, and that's where he finally fell into the pit. Yeah, and he dies. Yeah, so so long, Boba Fett. But meanwhile, Leia was about to strangle Jarbo the Hutt and kill them instantly. After that, they all escape. And while the others have rendezvous with the Rebel Alliance, Luke had returned to Dagobah, where he finds that Master Yoda, who's uh, performed by Frank Oz, is dying. And that's where they decided to reveal the truth behind Luke Skywalker's family where we now learn about the, the true dark secret, which I know they had revealed it in The Empire Strikes Back. So we already knew about what was going to happen next. Yeah, I'm not going to give it away, but you probably know what, what really will happen. So anyway, the Rebel Alliance have been sent to on a forest moon of Endor, where they had to strike to destroy the shield generator. By doing so, they, they ordered the entire squadron of starfighters to destroy the Death Star, which Lando is being chosen by going on to uh, Han's uh, Millennium Falcon ship. Yep, and that's where you see all the other um, crew around to team up, yeah, including the guy who keeps saying, It's a trap! Yeah, the Amberl. <laughs> but the strike team had accompanied by Luke and Leia as they travel into Endor in a stolen... Imperial shuttle, which um, on Endor, Luke and his companions have encountered a tribe of Ewoks that was led by Wicked, who was played by Warwick Davis. But at an initial conflict, they wound up gaining the trust. But meanwhile, you know, the Ewoks, you know, had <clears throat> at first didn't trust the crew because they thought they were, you know, they were one of the the bad guys, even though they weren't. They actually were planning to uh, fry them, even though they weren't, but they actually had uh, Leia as their uh, princess, and then, and then of course, they had C-3PO as their god. So this is where he tells the story in the tribe 
about what happened, and then that's where you hear all these sound effects, you know, from the, the first two films, as we know it. I know, it, it, I gotta say, the Ewoks were just an unnecessary uh, bunch of characters that was not needed for the story, but I guess they had to do that, you know, just for the kids to enjoy. Yeah, I guess that's just what George Lucas had in mind when he cast them. But otherwise, you know, they were okay. I mean, it could have been worse. We would have been stuck with Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> now, that's another story right there. God, because I can't stand that guy. But back on that, um, they were already planning on going after all these different kind of stormtroopers. Yeah, because they went on one of those uh, ships that they fly all the way straight to the forest. That was actually one of the coolest scenes that we saw in the movie. You know, they were about to go after them. So, what they did was they actually tried to destroy every single one of them. They even had one of those walkers, kind of similar to the ones they use in Empire Strikes Back. But they, this one was far different. So, yes. And I remember the scene where Chewbacca along with the two of the Ewoks went inside just to control it, just to, so they can stop and kill the other walker and kill all the other uh, stormtroopers that, that came by, yeah, along with uh, the rest of the crew from the, the Galactic uh, Empire. So yeah, they, and I know they were even trying to open the, the shield, yes, just so they can have them all escape and and go in before goodness knows what happens next. But meanwhile, Luke Skywalker has a plan by actually going against uh, Darth Vader and be able to meet um, the Emperor for the first time as they battle each other. And that's what leads to that once you know, Lando, you know, riding on, on riding on the Millennium Falcon and the rest of the other crew to go after the Death Star that they're ready to destroy, you know, before it's too late. So that's exactly what the film's all about. And I would say this, while it's not as good as the first two films, you know, not nearly as good, that is, but I do think it's as good as it should be because it is supposed to be the final chapter of the series and I think in a way it did work because I actually did love um, all the special effects that they chose in this version I mean you got to see more of of the battles that that we saw in, in the original film but it's it's even better because now we get to see a different uh, kind of Death Star that looks like it was just already reconstructing you know it doesn't seem like it was complete yet that's what I noticed. I mean, it was sort of unnecessary, but I guess they knew they wanted to come up with something. And when you go inside the Death Star, it looks exactly a lot different than the original Death Star. So I thought that was cool. And um, I actually uh, love the Emperor as the villain in the film. I think he's definitely worked so well. Yeah. I mean, definitely menacing, scary, creepy, because he was under control of of his master, Darth Vader. And then, of course, he even planned to have uh, Luke Skywalker fight against him. So, yep, it's because after all, he's the one that started it all. He started this plan. That was the idea. Okay. And... And like I said, the Ewoks was just unnecessary characters, but at times I think they were cute. But, I, I don't know, I mean, like I said, it just could have been worse. But, you know, I, I love Warwick Davis as an actor, I think he's a great guy. He was actually 11 years old when he played uh, Wicked, so that's interesting. Because he later went on to do the film Willow, when he was a teenager. And I always love him in Willow. Because without the Ewoks, we wouldn't have uh, Warwick Davis as a star. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But I love the, the lightsabers that they had in the movie. I think it looked even better than before. And it actually moves better, too. Yeah, the story itself became even more darker than ever, just like the last one. 
but it does have problems I mean with the story um, you know I thought the characters once again you know did an excellent job giving the right material for it because now we we continue what was going on I like how Lando actually got to do something in the film when he was riding on the Millennium Falcon I mean I thought that was really awesome and, and yes the, the Amber Roll and and the rest I mean they they were great but it's sad that we lost Yoda in this movie because he was a cool character from Empire Strikes Back and you know I didn't want to see him go yeah, and I agree, they did kind of rush that a bit. I mean, we, we could have saw more of him for for a little while before, you know, he, he was dying. But, either way, um, there were a lot of funny moments in the movie that I love. But, uh, I also love um, all the other um, intense scenes that they put into the film which I know that's what we get to at the end. I'm just glad that this movie um, took the final touch of it because they know this was going to be the perfect ending of the series. and That's how it went for it. That is until Star Wars The Force Awakens comes. But despite of its flaws, I do think it's a great film as a series and as the original trilogy. That's all I could say. So anyway, I give Return to the Jedi four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and may the Force be with you. Bye.